Welcome. In this video, we're going to connect some basic concepts with percent and algebra. Now, we're not going to really look at the intuitive nature of percent here. Instead, we're going to use a, a quick algorithm to understand how to deal with some concepts in algebra. So, so you can check the playlist in um, arithmetic for percents to get a basic sense of what's going on uh, if you want to go back and look at percents and understand them intuitively because it's something that you you really should know and something you can really take with you uh, throughout this video and, and others. Anyway, uh, let's start with the basic question um, in, in, in percent, which is what is you know this percent of a number? So we can have any percent, right? We can say what is, I don't know, uh, five percent of 12. Well, let's get some basic landmark here because typically the algorithm I want to use here is to convert this to a decimal and then multiply it by the number because you can think of, right, this word of as multiply, especially with percents. So here, whenever you see of, you can think multiply and what is what we're looking for, right? So, and, and the word is, you can think of as equals. So I can translate this, right? So it says something is 5% of 12, so times 12. But I want to convert this right here into a decimal. What's 5%? It's a decimal. Well, that's just 0.05, right? And some, some basic landmarks. Of course, 100% is equal to 1. 75%, it's a decimal, is 0.75. 50%, we'll just go through this real quick, is 0.5. 25% is 0.25. 10% is 0.1, right? And 1% is 0.01. So this is, a, I think, a good reference for us. We're, we're converting decimals to percents. Um, but, of course, you don't need this. You can always take your number and divide it by 100 to convert it to a percent, uh, a decimal. So you take the, the number in the percent, divide it by 100, and, and all that will happen when you do that is your decimal will move twice to the left. So whatever number you're given, divide by 100, quickly turn it into a percent. So now we want to multiply. And this algorithm might not always seem friendly, but it's quick, right? You can quickly turn your percent into a decimal and then multiply. And you can do the long multiplication, or if you have a calculator, just solve it, right? Here's my little app calculator right here. So 0 0.05 times 12. And there's the answer, 0 0.6. So in this case, x equals 0.6. And of course, you want to you know check for reasoning here, um, if you can, if the percent's not too unfriendly. But 5% should go into something how many times? Well, 20, right? Because 5%, 5 times, times 20 is 100%. That's the full value. So we should test it. 0.6 times 20 should equal 12. Let's test it out. This times 20, great, it equals 12, so that works. Let's try some, some others here, and then we'll move on to other variations of the question, some of which I'm sure you're familiar with or you will be familiar with soon. Um, let's try another one. What is 1.3? of 15. Now we're, we're going over 1% or 100%. So our decimal here, if we, div if we divide this, now let's try this question, which is what is 1.35% of, of 15? So now we're going a little bit above 1%, right? So 1% is 0.01. So what is this? Well, this is going to be 0.01 three five as a decimal and we could just divide this by a hundred to see that because the decimal goes over to the left twice so what is or something is 1.35 percent of multiply 15 well I don't know let's, let's just quickly take the calculator here and and apply that where my calculator go so here we can take 0.0135 times 15, oops, excuse me, yep, is, I missed that, 
0.2025. So that means the number here is 0 0.2025. And that, you know, this number should be small, right? It's it's a little bit above 1%. So it's 100 times smaller, right? It's 100 times smaller than 15. And that's our value. So yeah, it's a general algorithm. And this is something you should definitely be familiar with in algebra. Take your your percent, convert it to a decimal, and multiply by a number, and that gives you the, the value you're looking for. Now, what are some variations you might see here with percents in algebra? Well, another another kind of question they might ask is, um, let's say you have a number, let's say six, and they'll ask you something like, oh, well, six is I don't know, 12% of what number? So in this case, we're saying you got six, right, as the result of 12% of something. What is that something? So how do you find that? Well, I, I think one thing we should do is convert this into an equation that we can solve. So I, I see this literally, right, because is is equals, so six equals 12%, convert that to your, your decimal, 0.12, of, multiply, what number? Well, let's use, actually, let's use x for that number. So 0.12 times x. There we go. So now you can see that this is really just a matter of solving for x. And you can set these equations up like this. Here, we're saying 0.12 times something gave us 6. So we're using that algorithm, but they're giving us the result. So how do we solve for x? Well, this, I mean, this is not, not a friendly looking equation, I don't think, but if you had a simpler one, let's say just say for a moment, 2x equals 10. This would mean, of course, 2 times something is 10, right? And that something here, of course, is 5. But how do you know that? Well, you know that because of inverse operations. 10 divided by 2 is equal to x. Right? And that's 5, because 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that reasoning also applies here, except now we have x and 0.12. We're multiplying those two to get 6. So let's re reverse it, or you might say divide both sides by 0.12. It's the same reasoning. 0.12 divided by itself cancels out, and now we have 6 divided by 0.12. And we can pull up our calculator here, 6 divided by... 0.12. 50. So the answer here is 50. So that number was 50. And you could work this out, of course. If you took 12% of this number, you would get 6. And that's one type of question that might ask you. Let's try another one like that, because that's fun. And I think it's fun because some of these problems look confusing, but by turning them into an equation, we can solve them rather quickly. Let's, this time, say 14 is... I don't know, 8% of what number? So you, you should try this one on your own, but I'll go ahead and solve it as well. 14 is the number we have. It is 8% 0.08 of multiply by some number. So now x will just end up being, and I'll just write this quickly, 14 divided by 0.08, right? We're working backwards. So with these problems, really, you're going to end up dividing your, your, your result by the percent, and that will give you the original number that you multiplied by. And you don't have to memorize that. You can set up an equation and solve for x to see what happens. So here we have 14 divided by 0.08. And there it is, 175. That means the original number is, or was, I, I should say, 175. And you can test this out. If you took 8% of this number, you would get 14. Now let's try one last variation. And the wording here, it just, you know, nothing to memorize. Just follow along carefully when you're reading, and you can set up the equation to solve. So let's say um, they, they flip this around a little bit, right? And they tell you that um, 12 is what percent of, I don't know, let's keep it simple here, 24. Now, you might know that 12 is half of 24, but how could you set this up and, and solve it, right? How could you find that it's half or 50%? Or 
Well, it's just like before, because now we know we have 12, and it equals some percent. Well, let's say that's x of 24, so 24 times x. Now, if we solve for x, we divide both sides by 24. What happens? Well, 24 divided by 24 is just x, right? Those are gone. And 12 divided by 24 is 0 0.5. And now we basically have our answer, except we have it as a decimal. So the last step is to multiply, right, to convert a decimal to a percent, to multiply by 100. And that's the reverse of before, when we went, well, let's just write this out. This would be 50. That's the percent here. So 50 is the answer, like, like you might have recognized immediately because 12 is half of 24. But, of course, multiplying by 100 is easy because that means you're moving your decimal twice to the right. So instead of 0.5, we have 50. But I wanted to point this out because this is the reverse of what we've been doing so far. We've been starting with the percent. This is our percent right here, 50%. And turning it into a decimal. So we've been dividing by 100. So... Um, here, when you multiply and divide it by 100, you move between decimals and percents. Let's try one last example here, and then in the next video, we'll get some tougher stuff. So here, uh, again, let's say we have the number, I don't know, 18. And we want to know, it's what 18 is what percent, x percent, of, let's try a tougher one, 44. Well, set up our equation. 18 equals some percent of 44. So x times 44. To solve for x, we just divide by 44 on both sides. This cancels out. We have 18 divided by 44 is x. 18 divided by 44. Okay, so look at that. We get 0 0.40909, repeating. So 0 0.40909, repeating. So I could have actually gone right there. And that equals x. And this is fun because now we have to deal with a repeating decimal and we're going to multiply by 100. So what do we get? Well, when you multiply this by 100, you get 40.9, but you're not done because the 09s are repeating. So you want to make sure you also include those as well, right? This was an infinite sequence of 09s repeating over and over again. All we did is multiply by 100, then move our decimal from here over 1, 2 there. And we still have all those 09s afterwards. So here, that's your percent. In other words, almost 41%, right? X is 18 is almost 41% of 44, a little bit less than half, which is, you know, matches our intuition. So that's another thing. You know, when you're setting these up, look at your answer, even though you're not gonna you get questions where it's difficult to think about if this answer makes exact sense. If you don't have time to plug it in, if you don't have time to calculate does 40.90909% of 44 equal 18? Think about it intuitively. This is 40. 40 is a little bit less than half. And 18 is half of 36. So it's definitely less than half of 44. But not too far off. So this, is, this seems like a reasonable answer to me. Alright, hope that helps.